Behold, the Lord, the Mighty One, has come, and kingship is in his grasp, and power and dominion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today is the solemnity of the Epiphany of our Lord, and today we offer this Mass for all of our parishioners. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to your brightness, to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, Every nation on earth will adore you. 
May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he delivers the needy one who calls, the poor and the one who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the Feast of Epiphany, and of course we reflect on the three wise men coming from the East to pay homage to the newborn king, to the Christ child. And the word epiphany uh, comes from the Greek and it means revelation or manifestation. So God revealing or manifesting the truth to these wise men. Now, how did God do this? Some people speculate, you know, who were the wise men? And of course, they were wise individuals, so they were very learned and they did observe the stars, so they were probably astronomers. But some people say, well, they were astrologers. And astrology is a false science, it's a pseudoscience. So astrology is the belief that the stars or the position of the stars and the planets affects our behavior to a very great extent. So there are people, for example, who will read their horoscopes and it's all nonsense. But the way horoscopes are written, they're written in such a way that they could apply to most people. And if you do believe in your horoscopes, just that, that uh, positive uh, 
thinking the kind of disposes you to make what you read come true. So in other words, if it says, you know, be suspicious today in your financial dealings, well, you're going to be more careful. You're more, more likely to suspect someone and you're just going to notice things that you may not have noticed otherwise. So there's, there's no, no real science before, be, uh, behind astrology. It's a false science. It's interesting that it's not only people who read horoscopes, but there are other people also who believe that we don't have free will, that our actions are predetermined. And you know, some people might, might say, well, that's nonsense, but it's actually true. There are people who really believe this. There are some people who really don't believe that we have an immaterial soul and a conscious awareness of ourselves, that really we're just a process of biological processes, you know, the cells in our brain and our body kind of disposing us to think a certain way and to act in certain ways. And of course, this too is nonsense. There is some truth to the fact that sometimes some people may be genetically inclined in a certain way. So for example, people who, for example, suffer from fetal alcohol syndrome. So their mother was an alcoholic when they, they gave birth, uh, when they carried the child in the womb. And so this, the child genetically is affected by the alcohol in the mother's system and it causes the person to lack empathy and, and things like that. You know, sometimes when people have psychological issues also, you know, they commit horrible crimes and in, in court they are found not guilty because of their psychological issues. So there is some influence of our genes, but we are still free. So most people will believe that the way we act, the way we behave, the kind of character we have is dependent upon nature and nurture. So nature would be the genetic material that we have, the genetic disposition or predisposition that we have. And they do point out that there are basically four types of people, uh, two of them extrovert, two of them introvert. I won't go into all the details of that. But nurture refers to how we are nurtured by our parents. If we have very loving parents, we're more likely to be very loving. If we have parents who are yelling and screaming at each other, we're more likely to imitate them also. So nurture would also refer to things that we experience while we are growing up. So not just the influence of our parents or our siblings, but also people that we encounter in the world, teachers, uh, you know, in the case of someone who's abused, yes, it's definitely going to affect their disposition, their character. So we're a combination of nature and nurture, and most people will admit that. So it's true that our nature and our nurture, how we developed and, and how we are, does dispose us to act in certain ways, but we are still free. And, you know, some people will still not accept that. And, you know, I can point out, well, I'm free to raise my hand at this very moment. Uh, I did that freely. There was nothing that forced me to do that. And they would argue, well, it's all part of your, your disposition and it's all part of what you're doing. And no, not exactly. So when we think of the animal kingdom, you know, the animals, they're instinctive. And basically people who say that we don't have freedom, they're really applying that we, we're, we're instinctive like the animals. It's just that as human beings, we're so complex that our instincts are a little bit different. But note that instinct would apply to the present position. So exa for example, if an animal is cornered, it's either going to flee or it's going to fight. If it's cornered in such a way that it can't flee, it's automatically going to fight. It's, it's the only way it can defend itself. So they, they kind of use this principle and they apply it to ourselves. Well, we too will respond in a certain way in a given situation. But you see, the reality is that as human beings, we make choices not just for the present, not just based on our present circumstances, but for the future also. And the future is very much unknown. I mean, take, for example, in modern times, especially men who go to the gym and they work out and they lift weights and they, they you know, try to bulk up. They try to have big muscles. And why do they do this? Well, maybe to gain self-confidence. Maybe it's just for their physical health. Maybe they want to look good. So there could be a number of reasons. But do any animals do that? I mean, think of a lion. 
You know, imagine a lion doing push-ups on all fours and then, you know, a fellow lion asks, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing exercises so that I can run faster and capture that zebra. No, lions don't exercise. Yes, they'll stretch. It feels good to stretch. Even as human beings in the morning, sometimes it feels really good to stretch. So animals naturally stretch, but they don't exercise. They might play, but, you know, lions, for the most part, they just sleep around. They, they're very lazy in many ways until it comes time for the hunt. And then they run and they, they capture their, their prey. So we do things that are different. Think, for example, also of novels. You know, when we read a novel or even when we watch movies, it's like every movie is different. There's some similar elements, that's true. But you read a novel and, and they're different and, and there's different characters and you never know what the outcome is going to be. Some people will read the last page just to find out what's going to happen, but we don't know what's going to happen. And the reason we don't know what's going to happen is because human nature is such that we cannot predict how human beings will act. And often they act in ways that we don't expect. On the other hand, when we look at the animal kingdom, you know, imagine a bear cub, the first time it encounters a skunk, usually it's going to be the same result for every bear cub, pretty much, okay? So with human beings, we are free. We cannot predict how we are going to, or how others are going to act. And sometimes we can't even predict how we ourselves will act. We might say we're going to do a certain things. We, we make New Year's resolutions, and then we don't follow through. But we don't just react to the present moment. We plan for the future, and that's an indication of our freedom. I mean, think of the wise men. So they were intelligent. Some people speculate they were probably kings because they brought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I know there's very valuable, very costly gifts. They undertake this long journey, which they probably had to, you know, uh, required a certain expense, you know, purchasing camels, I don't know, and, you know, bringing money with them. They have no idea how long it's going to take. So they set out on a journey of faith because there's no guarantee that they will succeed. Did they just set out because they happened to see the star in the sky? Of course not. Just because there's a new star in the sky, just because that star might be moving, nobody in their right mind is going to set out on this journey. But they connected the dots. Because they were wise men, they studied other religions, they studied the, the writings of other religions, and based on the Jewish scriptures, which they probably had access to, they knew these prophecies of the coming Messiah, of the coming king, who would be the king of the entire world, the king of the universe. And so they wanted to belong to this kingdom, even though they themselves may have been kings. But the point I wanted to make out is nobody in their right mind would set out to follow a star. In other words, it's not a uh, instinctive response. Oh, there's a new star. I'm going to follow that star. No. I mean, think of cavemen, you know, way back, you know, let, let's just imagine them being very, very ignorant. If they saw a new star, the, the, what we could expect is they might be afraid. They might even throw stones at the star. Like, you know, nobody would set out to follow a star. You know, recently somebody uh, mentioned, or it was in the news, that the lining up of Jupiter and Mars, I can't remember what it was, that maybe this was what happened at the time of the birth of Christ, and this was the star that the wise men saw. That's nonsense. So in other words, this star was moving. This star was appearing night after night and leading the wise men to a certain place. Was it a comet? I mean, we can only speculate. It was probably a miraculous star. Maybe God just caused a light to shine to get the wise men to follow it. So in other words, they read the Jewish scriptures, they see the star, they make a connection, and they're inspired by God to follow after this star. And of course, when they find the Christ child, it mentions that they knelt down and they paid him homage and they gave these gifts to the newborn babe. And think how very different this is from the attitude of King Herod towards the Christ child. So King Herod feels threatened by the Christ child. He wants to destroy the Christ child and he orders the slaughter of all the innocents. I mean, that's kind of insane to feel threatened by a little child. On the other hand, these three wise men, elderly wise men, they come and they kneel before this babe this innocent, loving, lovable 
cuddable babe. And it, it kind of doesn't make sense that wise men, kings, would bow down and humble themselves before a mere child unless they understood that it is not an ordinary child, but God incarnate, which they did understand. And so they wanted to belong to his kingdom. And we too should desire to belong to God's kingdom. This is the most important thing for us, to belong to the kingdom of God. And, you know, when we mentioned that today's feast is, is epiphany, the revelation, the revealing, the manifestation. So God had revealed or manifested these truths to the wise men. And in the end, the Christ child is revealed to them. They get to see the Christ child. And we too should seek the revelation of God to be more enlightened by God. And how do we do this? Well, by reading scripture, meditating on the scripture, but also in our life of prayer, being open to the inspirations that God gives to us. We too should be willing to set out on a journey to find Christ ever more fully, to pay homage to him, to bend the knee before him, to adore him, to ensure that we belong to his kingdom. God came for all of us. He came not just for the Jewish people. He came for peoples of all nations, all the Gentile nations. The three wise men represent this fact. They manifest that Salvation would be for all peoples, all peoples, people of every nation, the Gentile nations. Most of us are from different backgrounds. Most of us are not from a Jewish background. So we have come and we have come to adore Christ, who is God incarnate, fully God and fully man. Let us do what we can this coming new year to grow in our relationship with God. God came not just to open the gates of heaven to enable us to make it to heaven, but he comes so that we enter into a relationship with him, a loving relationship. And he manifests himself to us first and foremost as an innocent child. In other words, he doesn't want us to be afraid of him. He wants us to love him because he wants to love us, and he wants us to benefit by the abundance of his love and the abundance of his many blessings and graces for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us raise our minds and hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of the church that we may receive the enlightenment, the revelation of God to inspire us to be ever more courageous and bold in proclaiming the truths of our faith. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for government leaders around the world, especially those of our own country, that they may be enlightened by Christ so that they may attain to true faith, true knowledge of Christ, and that they will base their government policies on, on the truths that God has revealed to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are victims of the coronavirus and uh, first responders, that they will do what they can to bring about the healing of, of peoples afflicted. And we ask this, uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those suffering from loneliness, isolation, depression, 
that they may be enlightened by Christ to know and understand the love that God has for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who have died, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, that through our prayers and sacrifices and through the offering of this Mass, they may attain to the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Father, almighty and eternal God, as we journey throughout this life, we don't know what the future holds for us. We ask that you help us to trust in you at all times, as did the wise men. Help us to reach our eternal destiny, our eternal goal, to find Christ, to enter into heaven, to find him in heaven. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with Without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants.
and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, 
We ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. So this Mass is pre-recorded, but today, Sunday, we will have communion services. So the Cardinal has allowed us to have communion services until further notice, but only on Sundays. So no need to pre-register, same as what we did at Christmas time. Uh, so only 10 people can come into the church at a time. When you come in, you will need to print your name, your contact information, and we will have a short communion service. A reading of the gospel. It just won't be myself distributing communion, but we will have some extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion to assist just so I don't get tired because uh, on Christmas we had it back to back. So notice that it's only on Sundays and it will be the regularly scheduled prayer times. So from nine until 1230, there will be no prayer time because we have these communion services. If there's less than 10 people coming at a time. If there's nobody else coming, you could linger, you could stay and, and pray for a while. But uh, we were quite busy on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So note it's only on Sundays, not Saturday evening. So Saturday evening from four to six, we have prayer time, but also confession time. So we wouldn't be able to do both communion and confession. It's just too complicated. So it's only on Sundays and the Cardinal has really just said Sunday, although it's possible some parishes may do it on Saturday evening also, I don't know. Just a reminder that your offertory envelopes for the year 2021 are now available. They were available for some time, but we had the lockdown. So if you need to get them, just ask myself or Rose or Amably, ask one of us when you're here at church and we can pick it up for you from the parish hall. 
A reminder that our Alpha program will be starting on January the 19th. It's in the evening, that's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. So it will run consecutively every Tuesday for 12 sessions in all. And basically Alpha is intended for those who are away from the faith or people who have no faith. So it's kind of an introduction to Christianity. So please uh, consider inviting some people that you know, maybe some family members. They can do it from the privacy of their own home. It'll be an online program. You know, encourage them just, just to give it a try. If they don't like it, they can always drop out. Or, and and uh, so it should be very good. Uh, if you want to give them more information, tell them that uh, of, there will be a video presentation and a discussion opportunity for questions also. So it's a wonderful program. I encourage you to encourage others to sign up for it. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. For vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.